and welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today, my mother-in-law and I are gonna be making four meals in a jar. I have never done this before. We're using her cookbook. These are all super easy. I feel personally intimidated to do this. I've never done this before. She is an expert at it. She does it all the time. I've had many of her meals in a jar and they are delicious. So I asked her if she would come over and teach me how to do it. She's gonna be here in just a little bit. So in the meantime, I thought I would go ahead and get all this produce prepped. I made a list of all the produce I need to chop. I need four cups of sliced onion, four cups of diced onion, three cups of chopped celery, and four cups of carrots. And I did a couple other things to prep so when she gets here, we can hit the ground running. One thing is I washed a whole bunch of jars, so those are ready for us. I also have my dishwasher going with another, another set of jars in case we need more jars. And then I am down to two quarts of chicken broth. So I did go ahead and get some chicken broth on the stove so that we can use this chicken broth in the canning process. So I'm not opening my last two jars of chicken broth to then can it again. I thought I might as well get another pot of broth going. All the recipes we're gonna be making are in this canning cookbook. This is my mother-in-law's and I can link this down below along with all the canning equipment. And we are going to be following the recipes on page, well, it doesn't actually have a page number because this is simple one jar meals. And it shows you how to do these simple one jar meals. And my mother-in-law is gonna walk us through this really simple process here. All of the vegetables have been washed once, but I will wash them again once I get them peeled, just to make sure everything is really, really clean. The method of canning we're gonna be doing today is pressure canning because these items that we're gonna be putting into the jar are low acid foods. And to make this safe, to be pantry stable, we need to pressure can them. The other method we're gonna be doing is gonna be called a raw pack method, meaning that all the items that are going into the jar are going to be raw, and we are gonna cook them when we pressure can them. So it makes for a really easy way to get meals in a jar very, very quickly. We are gonna be making four different recipes today. The first recipe we're gonna make is a chipotle beef, and when you open it, you can shred the beef because it's gonna be super, super tender from the pressure canning process. And you can turn that beef into tacos or enchiladas or however burrito bowls, however you wanna serve it. The other recipe we're gonna be doing is Faraday chicken. And that's gonna be the same type of thing where when you open it, you can shred the chicken and turn it into tacos, burrito bowls, anything like that. All you have to do is heat up those two meals. The third recipe we're gonna do is a pork roast with a white wine sauce. And this one I have had, my mother-in-law has made this before and it is so delicious. You can open the jar, warm it up and serve it that way. But the way my mother-in-law likes to serve this recipe is she opens it up, she creates a roux on the stove and then she puts the jar of roast in that roux. She thickens it up a little bit, puts it in a baking dish, and tops it with mashed sweet potatoes, bakes it, and turns it into a pork sweet potato shepherd's pie type meal. And then the third recipe I'm really looking forward to having come this winter is chicken soup base. So it's gonna have all the ingredients that you want in a really yummy chicken soup. And you can turn that into a multitude of different things. You can turn it into chicken pot pie, chicken noodle soup, chicken and dumplings, and all the ingredients are already cooked and ready to go. All you have to do is open it up and serve it. I'm really looking forward to this on the, you know, if we get sick or if we just want something cozy and quick, we can open one of these jars and have that happen. Now I did just take these onion peels since the soup is gonna be simmering for a bit and I put those onion peels in with the broth. Now that all the vegetables are prepped and ready to go, I have a few minutes before my mother-in-law gets here. So I'm gonna start prepping some of the meat as well. The first thing we're gonna prep is the beef for the chipotle shredded tacos. I have a rump roast. We're gonna use this for the chipotle pork and I'm gonna cut it into about one and a half inch cubes and I'm gonna do the same thing with the pork roast. My mother-in-law is actually the one that's gonna be bringing the chicken that we need for the recipes and so I'm gonna just keep going and getting the things done I can get while I wait for her to head on over. So I do take the time and cut off any big pieces of fat. I want there to be 
just mostly like lean protein going into the jar a little bit is going to be totally fine when you pressure can something it's like you're slow roasting it in the oven for many hours and so it gets really tender but i just don't want any big pieces of fat one of the ingredients we need that i could prep while i'm waiting is some chipotles i'm going to get these chopped up you can see in the background those are some jars of tomato soup and that is i think that's yes that is the first meal in a jar i have ever canned and i'm really excited to have it on my pantry shelf and i'm really excited for my mother-in-law how to teach me to do this really simple raw pack method i'm going to go ahead and get some of the canners set up i have a digital countertop pressure canner my mother-in-law is going to bring hers as well so we're going to have four pressure canners going to finish this project on this day my mother-in-law just texted me and said she's on her way so because of that, I want to strain this broth so that we don't have to strain it when we put it into jars. We need the broth to be hot. So I'm going to strain the broth into this big bowl. And then we'll put the big bowl back on the stove to keep warm so it'll be ready for us when we make our broth. I did rinse my big pot out just to make sure there wasn't any leftover anything in the pot. And we'll get this back on the stove to heat up or to stay hot so it'll be ready for us. My mother-in-law here, this is Renee. Hello. And she came bearing gifts. We need chicken today. And so she brought the chicken. I'm gonna take a few minutes and dice up the chicken just the same way I did the beef and the pork. Renee is going to start making the Chipotle tacos. Yeah. And she's going to walk through her favorite canning cookbook and the reason and the way she does it and the reason why she does it. Yes. Well, I get going on the chicken. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite canning books. And in the center of this is the, the all new ball book of canning and preserving. And in the middle is this green section, simple one jar meals. And I use these all the time. So um, I think Becky's already told you what we're making today. But um, I just want to talk about this, how convenient it is having these meals in a jar. I have a big family. I mean, I've got four kids, they're all married, and we like to have spontaneous get-togethers. And so having this really easy, convenient meal in a jar, just pulling them off the pantry shelf whenever I want to have company over is fantastic. And I will say that because we're pressure canning and pressure cooking the meat, it's like we're slow cooking it. So it has even more flavor. It tastes so much better. So it's stress-free. Everything is in the jar and it's ready to go. If you look at the instructions in the book, they talk about taking all the ingredients and then mixing them up and then filling the jars. But honestly, what I like to do is fill the jars with the individual ingredients just to make sure everything is evenly distributed because that way I don't have more potatoes in one jar. I like to make sure everything is consistent. And I will say that I like to put the seasonings in the jar first so that they don't float to the top and then I add the broth. So I'm gonna do that first. For each one quart jar, we need one teaspoon of salt. This is a half teaspoon, so I'm gonna do two of these in each jar. And then we have a teaspoon of dried oregano. Oh, this oregano smells good. It says eight garlic cloves sliced, but I'm gonna use, use about a, a good teaspoon of, of garlic powder. Woof. We like, that's a lot, but that's okay. We'll eat it. We like garlic. We like garlic, keeps out way the vampires. And then we need a quarter cup of chopped fresh cilantro, and I think Becky just picked this. I think it's probably still growing. <laughs> I did really, just pick it. It smells really good. All right, and then next is, let's see, two chipotle chili peppers in adobo, finely chopped. So I'm just going to put a good spoonful in each one-ish. Might add more. 
For each of these, we're gonna do a pound of beef. And so nice, Becky cut this in. These are two inch chunks of, what kind of beef is this? Round roast. Okay. I think. It's nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna evenly divide this up. Each jar. Not a good amount. And then I'll top it off with the onions. Make sure there's about the same at each one. You could measure this, but you know, or weigh it, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. Now to each of these jars, we're gonna add one cup of sliced onions. So the one pound, you can see where it's not quite filling it all the way, but we want this to be brothy because then that way, when you make it with rice and all that later too. So one cup, this is, this is a half cup. So I'll do that twice. Now that all of the jars are filled, Renee is going to top each jar with beef broth. This recipe calls for beef broth. The other three recipes call for chicken broth. So she's going to fill it up to one inch headspace, which just means from where the top of the jar is to where the contents of the food is in the jar, you want one inch. Once she's filled them up, she's going to take a chopstick and she's going to move it around the outside of the jar and make sure to debubble because if there's bubbles in it, it can affect where the broth line is. So sometimes when you debubble, the broth will go under that one inch headspace. And so she'll debubble, top off with broth, and then we're gonna put a new lid, a ring on it, and put it in the pressure canner. But we're not gonna start the pressure canner until we have all four recipes done, because all these recipes pressure can at the same time for the same pressure. Now I am prepping the chicken for two of the recipes while she's been working on the beef recipe. So now I'm just gonna wipe off each of the jars with some white vinegar. Gonna make sure it's nice and clean. Don't have any fat or salt on there. And we also wanna make sure we don't have any nicks or chips. Okay. And just finger tight. All right, one down. Yay! Well, that was easy. <laughs> Super easy. So now we're gonna pop these in the canner, and these are these are not hot. So we have the canner is the same temperature as these jars. There, something always felt really intimidating by that, but that was just a matter of chopping vegetables and putting it into a jar. So now. Yeah. Do you want to do the salsa verde one next? Yes. Awesome. For the chicken verde, we're going to start with the seasonings like Renee recommended, which is going to be the salt. And then garlic. And then cilantro. And the recipe calls for pickled jalapenos. I am going to use fresh because that's what I have out of my garden. What makes this salsa verde is that we are gonna add some salsa verde to it. And this is salsa verde, Renee, you and I made together last year oh, when we right. yeah. yeah, when we did a canning day together. So next goes in the chicken. And I cut up enough chicken for this recipe and for the chicken base recipe, chicken soup base recipe. So I need to make sure I don't put too much chicken in these jars and we still need to add the onions. Oops. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. Ready to go. If I tried to do that, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> now we're gonna add the onions to top this off. And then this is done after we add the broth but we're gonna add all the broth at the same time when we have the other two recipes done. This recipe filled the jar a lot fuller than the last recipe, and the cookbook said if you only need one tablespoon or two of broth to top it off with, then that will be okay. So now we're gonna start the next recipe. We just realized we forgot to add the beans to the salsa verde, so that's okay. You can add them later. Yeah. 
The next recipe we're gonna be doing is the chicken and gravy, and I'm gonna use this as a chicken soup base. And the recipe calls for potatoes. I never put potatoes in my chicken soup for like chicken noodle soup or for a base for chicken pot pie, but I do put, put carrots. So we're gonna substitute the carrots for the potatoes in this next recipe. Yeah. And we're not gonna forget anything this time. <laughs> <laughs> Renee got everything set up for the next recipe. All right, so we're gonna start with the seasonings again. So we have a teaspoon of salt. This is a half a teaspoon. Half teaspoon black pepper. One teaspoon poultry seasoning. So two tablespoons of dry white wine. I think this is kind of appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Partners in crime. <laughs> this is definitely more fun to can with a friend in the kitchen than it by is, yourself. It is. Even though we distract each other and sometimes <laughs> forget to add things. That's okay. That's okay. We can add beans later. Next, we're going to put in one pound of chicken in each of the jars. Yeah, that poultry seasoning is really fresh. We yeah. just got it at the store. Mine, I think I have at home, is like 20 years old. So <laughs> I think I'm gonna get some fresh. Now we're gonna add the veggies. And I think it's such a smart idea to sub substitute the carrots for the potatoes because when I've made this, it's really good over mashed potatoes. So oh. if you put potatoes in it, it's kind of redundant to put the potatoes in it. That makes sense. All right, so in each jar, we're gonna add a half a cup of celery, carrots, and onions. not to throw things on the floor and then a half a cup of celery once we add the celery we are going to add a half a cup of onions and then these need to be topped with broth but we're going to wait we're going to top all of the recipes with broth at the same time so now that this is done we can set it aside and get ready for our next recipe for this next recipe, we are gonna do the pot roast, but Renee gave this really great idea. She likes to make this recipe using pork instead of beef, and she likes to then substitute the red wine for the white wine, because it just goes a little bit better with pork. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to try this. Yeah, and I just made this for Hannah and Kai recently. And oh. I made it into a pot pie and used oh. cornbread muffin topping. Oh, that sounds good. But then you can also make it like a, um, I call it shepherd's pot pie or cottage pot pie, and I yeah. like to cover it with mashed sweet potatoes. Oh, that's with the pork? Uh-huh. Okay, really good. really good ideas. Yeah. This recipe, again, starts with one teaspoon of salt. I think all of them start with one teaspoon of salt. And when I open these, I'm gonna have to open them with you all, and we're gonna have to try all these different variations of using these meals in a jar. Now we're gonna add one teaspoon of black pepper. And these might be a little generous. Now we're gonna add the garlic. A half a cup of celery. Renee's better at this than I am. <laughs> oh, I was using the wine mouth jars. Oh, that's true. Don't give me credit for it. I was like, why is this so much harder than it was earlier? You gave me the wine mouth jars, that was nice of you. One bay leaf in each jar. A teaspoon of dried thyme. Now we're going to divide the pork evenly between these jars. Once I have the pork in the jars, I'm going to add a half a cup each of potato, carrot, and onion, along with a half a cup of white wine. And then we can top this recipe along with our two chicken recipes with the chicken broth that I made earlier. We're gonna do the same thing with these recipes that we did with the beef where we're going to fill up to one inch headspace and then we will take the chopstick and the bubble. Now for me and my elevation, the recipe in the book says to can it for 11 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes. And pressure canning is one of those things that depending on your elevation, it can change how many pounds of pressure you need to pressure can something for. So the National Center for Home Food Preservation is a website that I'm going to link down below. So if you're new to pressure canning, they are the go-to resource for 
pressure canning and water bath canning. And you can put in your elevation there and know exactly what pounds of pressure you need to be pressure canning for. Pressure canning is something that you wanna make sure you follow the guidelines. And as long as you follow the guidelines, you'll know that you have a safe product on your pantry shelf. Between that website and having a really good cookbook that you trust and following your manual on your pressure canner, that's another really great resource when you are pressure canning. I use my pressure canning manuals all the time. That is a great way to know that as long as you follow those rules, you have a safe product on your pantry shelf. So this was so fun having Renee in the kitchen with me, kind of walking me through this process because this was something new to me. I've always been more of an ingredient canner, meaning I can, you know, chicken broth or beans or, you know, tomato sauce, a single ingredient thing. And it's been super fun kind of venturing out and learning to can convenience foods like the tomato soup or the chicken soup base, where it's going to be a lot easier when it comes to dinner time because everything is already pre-chopped and pre-cooked and just needs to be warmed up and you've got a meal ready to go. I do love these four jars lids. I have not had any lid failures. And in fact, recently I did some canning and I had another brand that came with the jars and I had two seal failures and it was just, oh, you haven't done that one yet. And, um, it was super disappointing. Yeah, I've had two lid failures this year because I was trying to use other brand lids too mm -hmm. because I had bought some new new jar. Oh, that jar. Does it have a... We found a jar with a nick in it. Well, it's a good thing we found it now. Yep, so what we're gonna do with this jar, this is why you always feel around the outside. Right here, there's a little nick, and if you weren't feeling, if you were just looking, you might not, well, you can really see that. It's right there. So they don't show up if you're if you're just kind of looking you don't really notice it but when you feel you can really feel it so what we'll do we won't this is totally fine we will take the contents of this jar and we'll pour it into a new jar and we'll make sure that that gets jarred up that jar i'll go ahead and recycle because i don't want it to get into my rotation of candy jars so all of these recipes can for the same pressure in the same time for my altitude. So depending on where you live, you might have to do a different pounds per pressure, but all of them are 90 minutes. This was really, really easy to do this. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of getting over that initial step of doing it, I guess. The first time I pressure canned were beans and I was really scared. And You're here, you yeah. survived. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> so we're gonna get these in the canner now. All right, and I'll find a new jar for this. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you found that, because that would have been disappointing. Yes, I can pop these into the canners okay. while you're doing that. Each one of these canners can hold seven jars, so we can get 14 jars pressure canning on the stove at one time. One of these canners is mine, one of them is Renee's. We have the same pressure canners. We are also going to be using some countertop digital canners as well and Renee brought hers over as well so we end up having two stovetop and two canners on the countertop going. All right so we're going to put the cover on. I've already done the safety checks. Everything is tight. And there's I've looked through the little um, vent pipe to make sure it's not blocked. The gasket is good and so now um, there's an arrow here on this handle and there's an arrow on the lid. So I'm going to line those up there's this little latch here. And so when this comes up, this actually, let me turn it over so you can see it. See this little doodad yep. here? It latches it into place so the lid locks. So Renee's gonna turn the stove on and get those going. These are the two that did not fit in those canners. Those canners fit seven quarts total. But I have my stovetop digital canner and Renee's, or not stovetop, countertop digital canner and I have Renee's. So I can get another 10 quarts pressure canning. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I have all this broth. I might as well, if I'm pressure canning. Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming over, Renee. You're welcome. We, we have all sorts of beans. Oh yeah. We have, uh, I opened a jar of beans because we needed it for a recipe and I forgot to add it. So that was so fun yeah. and so easy. So those are gonna vent for 10 minutes. And then once they vent, I'll put the weight on and get them up to pressure. They will pressure can for 90 minutes.
turn it off and let it cool in the canner for about 10 minutes or so when there's zero pressure and then I'll take them out of the canners. Your kitchen smells so good. It smells <laughs> Renee and her husband do have a YouTube channel I can link down below where they do fun projects around their homestead. And I just want to thank Renee again for hanging out with me in the kitchen and walking me through this process. So now that the stovetop canners are starting to heat up, I'm going to jar the rest of this stuff up. I did have to cook two chickens in order to make the chicken broth. So I'm going to go ahead and get that chicken jarred up as well. And we're going to use the two countertop digital canners to get these pressure canned. So we are gonna pressure can everything at 11 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes for my altitude, but just know that for you, you may need to increase the pounds of pressure and the time canning if you are at a different altitude. So we've got all four of the canners done now, so I am gonna go ahead and unload them. If you wanna watch more of Renee and I in the kitchen together, we've got a video here I can put where we make pasties, and then we do have a video where we made a bunch of fun canning projects last year. So friend, thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with us. I greatly appreciate you, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.